guys, I'm back for another video, and welcome to another tutorial. And in this one, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install and set up the best settings for OBS Studio. Not only is OBS Studio free, but with the right settings, you can manage perfect quality video for many resolutions, including 720p, 1080p, 1440p, and even 4K. So of course, before you can set up OBS, you gotta download it. I'm not gonna show any of the setup initially installing it because it's really straightforward so let's jump straight to the settings so once you've installed it you should have something that looks like this of course i have a tunneling effect since i am currently recording with obs studio so you have ignoring this you have a bunch of options here so before we get into any of the scene and source stuff let's go to the settings so click on that and then you have the settings of course so let's go over every tab and make sure that your settings match mine. There are a few things that are going to have to change depending on your computer, but for the most part, everything is pretty similar. On the general tab, everything is okay to start with. So let's start out with the output tab. You're going to see that some of these things can't be changed, but that's only because I'm recording right now. When you're actually using the program, you can change these things. So output mode, you're going to want to put it to advanced and then set your audio track to one encoder x264 and for streaming server encoding settings rescale output this is you can change this rescale output i stream and record in 1080p which is 1920 by 1080 if you want to do 720p it'd be 1280 by 720 if you want to do 1440p that you get the idea so let's go down to the important stuff we got rate control cbr bitrate 6000 keyframe interval two seconds profile preset very fast profile main to none and you can put some stuff in here if you know more about obs but i just leave it blank i don't need any of that stuff and the most important part for me is the recording tab so i've got a path set up for where the files go when they're done type standard recording format mp4 i use two audio tracks i'd recommend you do the same one audio track for the desktop and whatever game you're recording or whatever software you're recording the audio for and then the second audio track would be for the microphone so your voice so continuing on we have encoder x264 rescale output 1080p and we have no custom settings there's another option here if your computer crashes a lot then you're not really going to want to use mp4 because what happens is if you're in the middle of a recording the computer shuts off then the file's corrupted and it's unusable if you record in something like flv you actually gain the benefit that when your computer shuts off you still have the file and it's not corrupted so you can still use it for editing and whatnot the only disadvantage to that is you can only have one audio track so you'd have to change some things up but if you're having that problem i'd recommend you go look at another video but i'm just throwing it out there if you have that problem anyway let's get to rate control i set it to crf and i have it at 10. now you can change this number this is where i'd recommend you start with this is the only value i think you really might need to change as time goes on but anyway yeah so crf 10 keyframe interval 2 super fast i have profile high you could set it to main but again this is the settings that work best for me main works for a lot of people this number crf if by the end of this tutorial you lag in your recordings then make sure to up this number to a max of 20. a lot of people say that 15 works for them i have a very powerful cpu which means 10 works for me and i'm able to get really really crisp video quality but of course if your computer can't handle that make sure to up this number again to a maximum of 20. if you go any higher than 20 you're going to start losing quality and you don't want that so i have a friend that records on a laptop with a very low power cpu and he still manages perfect quality recording with i think his settings was 15. so there you go you can set that to 15 but if you know you have a really powerful desktop computer with something like an i7 overclock to 4.0 gigahertz or something like that you're good <laughs> all right anyway let's go to the audio tab again you can set this up how you want but the way i set it up is that my track one is main audio the bit rate is 192 and you can name them as well so i know which one's which that's why i did that and then my audio bit rate for the second track is 320 and that would be the microphone which for me is a blue yeti so yeah that's simple enough all right so let's go straight to the video tab 
you're going to want to set your resolution here. I have it set to 1440p because that's the resolution of my monitor and I scale it down to 1080p 60 FPS. I would recommend if you're trying to pick a frame rate and you have to choose between 1080p or 60 FPS, I would definitely stick with 60 FPS and then downgrade to 720p because especially for gaming, 60 FPS is a standard now. Anything less than that starts to look like a slideshow and it's just not acceptable anymore. And I would recommend the bicubic downscale filter. It's relatively efficient and it also is pretty crisp. So let's go to the audio tab. Again, this stuff you'll be able to change. I'm just not able to do it because I'm recording right now with the same program that I'm trying to show a tutorial for. Kind of confusing, I know. All right, let's go to the audio tab. There shouldn't be too many differences here. Leaving everything to default just works most of the time, but what I have it set up as the sample rate is 48 kilohertz channels, stereo, and then I have my mic audio device 2 is where I put the microphone. I'm not sure why it's at two, but I just messed around with it and that's what ended up working. So again, setting up all of this stuff, you just kind of had to mess with it. Depends. This is like delay. So for example, if the audio in your microphone is for some reason delayed compared to the desktop audio, you can mess with some values here, add delay, remove delay, things like that. Especially if you have a face cam, you have to line up your face cam audio with the video and I recommend a delay of 160 but that's not here so we'll get into that later as far as hotkeys are concerned it's completely up to you I tend to use page up to start streaming page down to start recording and anyway let's just skip straight over that because that's up to you there shouldn't be too many things you have to change in the advanced tab I have above normal process priority just in case you have a game that hogs up a lot of CPU and you gotta enforce that OBS needs at least something to work but if that doesn't work for you, you can always put it down to normal, which I think the default is. And let's see, audio, you can set everything as you see it here. I do not know if I changed any of it. I don't think so. This is, for the most part, default. All right, so that leaves us with the last tab, and that is stream. Of course, if you're just recording, you don't need to see this part. But make sure to stick along for the rest of the tutorial, because this is just settings. Anyway. So yeah, the way I set it up is through a service called Restream, which is fun. Stream type, I set to streaming services. I'm pretty sure 99% of you are going to need to do that as well because custom streaming server. Again, if you have to select that, you probably know what you're doing. All right, so then we go to the service. You have a whole list of all the big ones. I have Restream IO, which I'll do another tutorial on. And if you don't know what Restream is, it allows you to stream to multiple platforms at once. And I currently use it to go to YouTube and Twitch at the exact same time. I'll be leaving a card in the top right hand corner if you wanna see that tutorial, it's pretty cool. Anyway, you have all the common ones like Twitch, YouTube, and then some of the lesser known ones like Dailymotion or Smashcast, I've never even heard of that. And apparently you can stream to Twitter, I didn't know that. And I know there's Facebook Live, so there's a lot of options here, but I, of course, chose Restream, so that's what I'm gonna stick with. And then you have the server, which I would recommend you set near you. For me, it's US East because I live in New York, so Washington isn't that far away. And yeah, if you're in any of these places, whichever one's closest to you. And then you have your stream key. Now, you get this from either if you're on Twitch, you just can grab it. But if you're on YouTube, then it's a little different depending on how you set up your streams or even restream. But yeah, you dump that number in here. I have it hidden, of course, because I don't want any of you streaming to my channel. That'd be a little weird. With the main settings out of the way, I have one more thing to show you as far as settings are concerned. Let's go to Edit Advanced Audio Properties. As you can see, I have my microphone aux 2 at volume 100. Of course, this is where you can control the audio levels. So for example, if your microphone is too loud or not loud enough, you can change the value here. And then this is panning, which I believe is the distribution of like how much sound goes in which side of your earphones. I would recommend just leaving that middle. And the sync offset, this is what I was talking about earlier. If you're using something like a Logitech C920, you're gonna have around 180 milliseconds of delay between your face cam and your audio. So 180 works for me having that delay. What that does is it delays my audio so that it matches up with the 
face cam. So like you see my lips moving at the same time as you hear my words. Okay. Audio monitoring. Don't get involved with that. And I said, okay, this is a little weird. I did this for Sony Vegas editing purposes because my templates are set up kind of weird. So I set it so that my tracks, the microphone is track two. The desktop audio is track one. Of course, you can set these up however you want. If you're streaming, this is important. When you're streaming, make sure they're both on track one. Otherwise, you're not going to hear any audio on your streams. So that's very important. So anyway, that's the audio properties. That's really it as far as settings are concerned. You are almost ready to get up and running with OBS. Now there's one more thing you need to do, and that's to figure out the scenes and sources. Here's another spot for monitoring audio and changing audio levels. You're not really going to need to touch this much if you already have your presets set in the settings, of course. And then you have some things here. You can cut or fade between scenes. You can change how long it takes to do that. And then you have studio mode, which I don't, I don't use. It's really not that useful, but whatever. So now we get into... The, I have a whole bunch of these scenes set up and I'll have tutorials for something like a super chat notification with Streamlabs. If you want to see that, I have a link in the top right hand corner as well. So that's a thing. Okay. So let's add a basic source. Well, first, of course you want a scene, you just right click add, and then you name it something, you call it test, and then it'll just be empty. There'll be no sources in it. You click on it and it'll be empty. You'll see a black screen. So then in that sources, you right click add. And then depending on what you want to add a source, I have what's called a display capture on right now. That's what I called monitor that records my main monitor. Now keep in mind, this is only limited to 30 FPS. I'm pretty sure. So just keep that in mind. So since I already have a monitor capture, let's go through the process of a game capture. So I'm going to call it Minecraft because it's one of the easiest games to test this with and then make source visible. Sure. Oh, I already have that one. So let's go Minecraft 2. There we go. So then we get something that looks like this. And you want to disable this. You don't want to capture any full screen application because it doesn't work. It doesn't do what it says it does. So capture specific window. And then you get the choice. Make sure whatever you want to record is already open. So let's open up Minecraft. Boop. All right. Anyway, now that the thing's open and we've restarted the process, we go back. Capture specific window. Window. Minecraft 1.12. And then there's some settings here. Oh, here's the thing that might help you a lot. If you're getting a black screen in OBS, I, I'm not. But if you do, multi-adapter compatibility. If you enable that, you might have some luck. So that's a thing. Anyway, so here's something too that's notable. Capture cursor. You can turn that on or off. As you can see in the recording, you can see the mouse. If I click this, then you won't see the mouse. So if you have a game that like the mouse is constantly sitting in the in the middle and you don't want to see it you can enable that but i just tend to keep it on because you know it's good to see where you're pointing <laughs> anyway you press ok and then there it is of course minecraft's a very tiny little i don't even know what resolution this is i think it's 512 whatever oh yeah and in obs this is where things get kind of complicated i'm going to move minecraft off the screen so it makes it a little simpler to see all right so we have minecraft running on my other monitor because I have a 1440p screen, of course, this tiny little 512 resolution window is not going to cover the whole thing. The way to fix that is to go in full screen. But yeah, so that's how you do game capture. There's another thing you can do if you want to add a face cam. The way you do that is you right click, add, and then you do video capture device. I've already done it. As you can see, I have my face cam. Hold on, I'm going to get rid of this Minecraft too. I don't need that. And close the game. And let's turn on the webcam. Hello. <laughs> so I have a webcam and you can set up other things as well. So I can set up a live sub counter. If you want a tutorial on how to get that, then I'll have a card in the top right hand corner as well. Also, if you're recording a face cam, as you can see right now, the quality is kind of meh. I don't really stick out from my environment. It makes very low quality video. So what you're going to want to do is have some lighting. Boom. Having a light just beaming at my face immediately makes the recording quality a hundred times better. Trust me, just invest in a cheap USB light, something to face towards you and then have a dark background. Then you have decent quality video. Of course, there's a shadow on my face over here. That's because the light's not centered, 
but that's just because my setup doesn't really allow me to do that. But if you really want it to be intense with it, you could have two lights, one on each side. Like, <laughs> but yeah, so that's face cam stuff. There's some other things you can do, like having an image. I have a B-Rite back screen for when I'm streaming, so that's nice. It's just, yeah, you can just add images by right click, add, and then image, and then you could just go to the file path. So I think that's it. So leave a like down below if you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have any questions for OBS Studio, make sure to leave them in the comments down below, and tell me how it went. Because I've, again, I've tested this with my friend with a basic laptop that can just barely game at normal settings and OBS barely hurt it at all. Like it didn't hurt the performance of the games. He kept maintaining high frame rates and was able to record perfect quality video. And his biggest problem was finding a place to put it. That's the one disadvantage of most recording software is actually Fraps, DxTory, OBS. The file sizes are huge. <laughs> well, anyway, that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.